subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to Test Prep Training. Today we will discuss about, Google Associate Cloud Engineer Exam. Google Associate Cloud Engineer Exam could be the best choice for you to schedule your entry into this booming sector. This page will provide you with complete information about this exam along with some important preparatory resources. What is Google Associate Cloud Engineer? Google Associate Cloud Engineer deploys applications, monitors operations of multiple projects, and maintains enterprise solutions to ensure that they meet target performance metrics. This individual has experience working with public clouds, and on-premises solutions. They are able to use Google Cloud Console, and the command line interface to perform common platform-based tasks to maintain one, or more deployed solutions that leverage Google Managed, or self-managed services on Google Cloud. The Associate Cloud Engineer exam assesses your ability to First, set up a cloud solution environment Second, plan, and configure a cloud solution Third, deploy, and implement a cloud solution Fourth, ensure successful operation of a cloud solution Fifth, configure access, and security Exam details Google Associate Cloud Engineer exam consists of 50 questions which have to be answered in 120 minutes. The cost of taking the exam is $125 however, the prices may vary from place to place. The exam is available in English, Japanese, Spanish, Indonesian language. You can schedule the exam online at Web Assessor, or can go for on-site proctored exam. You must obtain at least 70% marks in order to pass the exam. There are no prerequisites for taking the Google Associate Cloud Engineer exam. However, Google recommends 6 months plus hands-on experience with Google Cloud. Now we will discuss about, scheduling policy. You can schedule the exam in any of the available ways in which you are comfortable. There are two ways specified by Google. First, if you wish to take through online way, create your account on Web Assessor, and register for the exam. Second, if you wish to take through on-site proctored way, you can select the exam, and then the testing center near you, or according to your convenience. Recertification Policy Candidates must recertify in order to maintain their certification status. All the description is clearly stated in the detailed description of the exam. All Google Cloud certifications are valid for two years from the date certified. You may attempt recertification starting 60 days, prior to your certification expiration date. Any attempt to recertify, or attempt the same exam while currently certified before this time period will result in a rejected attempt, forfeiture of any exam fees paid possible revocation of your current certification, as well as any other Google Cloud certifications, and possible suspension from the Google Certification Program. Now we will talk about, retake policy. Unless stated otherwise, if you fail the exam, you may retake the exam, but you must wait at least 14 days before doing so. If you fail the exam a second time, you may retake the exam, but must wait at least 60 days before doing so. If you fail the exam a third time, you may retake the exam but you must wait at least one year before doing so. Syllabus details. First, setting up a cloud solution environment. Second, planning and configuring a cloud solution. Third, deploying and implementing a cloud solution. Fourth, ensuring successful operation of a cloud solution. Fifth, configuring access and security. Let us now discuss about syllabus topics in detail. First, setting up a cloud solution environment. Number 1. Setting up cloud projects and accounts. Activities include 1. Creating projects. 2. Assigning users to predefined IAM roles within a project. 3. Managing users in cloud identity, manually and automated. 4. Enabling APIs within projects. 5. Provisioning one or more stack driver workspaces. Number 2. Managing billing configuration. Activities include 1. Creating one or more billing accounts. 2. Linking projects to a billing account. 3. Establishing billing budgets and alerts. 4. Setting up billing exports to estimate daily or monthly charges. Number 3. Installing and configuring the command line interface CLI, specifically the cloud SDK. For example, setting the default project. Second, planning and configuring a cloud solution. Number 1. Planning and estimating GCP product use using the pricing calculator. Number 2. Planning and configuring compute resources. Considerations include 
1. Selecting appropriate compute choices for a given workload, for example, Compute Engine, Google Kubernetes Engine, App Engine, Cloud Run, Cloud Functions. 2. Using preemptible VMs, and custom machine types as appropriate. Number 3. Planning, and configuring data storage options. Considerations include. 1. Product choice, for example, Cloud SQL, BigQuery, Cloud Spanner, Cloud Bigtable. 2. Choosing storage options, for example, Standard, Nearlin, Coldline, Archive. Number 4. Planning, and configuring network resources. Tasks include. 1. Differentiating load balancing options. 2. Identifying resource locations in a network for availability. 3. Configuring cloud DNS. 3. Deploying, and implementing a cloud solution. Number 1. Deploying, and implementing compute engine resources. Tasks include. 1. Launching a compute instance using Cloud Console, and Cloud SDK, and Cloud, for example, Assigned Disks, Availability Policy, SSH Keys. 2. Creating an auto-scaled managed instance group using an instance template. 3. Generating, or uploading a custom SSH key for instances. 4. Configuring a VM for stack driver monitoring, and logging. 5. Assessing compute quotas, and requesting increases. 6. Installing the stack driver agent for monitoring, and logging. Number 2. Deploying, and implementing Google Kubernetes Engine resources. Tasks include. 1. Deploying a Google Kubernetes Engine cluster. 2. Deploying a container application to Google Kubernetes Engine using pods. 3. Configuring Google Kubernetes Engine application monitoring, and logging. Number 3. Deploying, and implementing App Engine, Cloud Run and Cloud Functions resources. Tasks include, where applicable. 1. Deploying an application, updating scaling configuration, versions, and traffic splitting. 2. Deploying an application that receives Google Cloud events, for example, Cloud Pub, or sub-events, Cloud Storage Object Change Notification events. Number 4. Deploying, and implementing data solutions. Tasks include. 1. Initializing data systems with products, for example, Cloud SQL, Cloud Data Store, BigQuery, Cloud Spanner, Cloud Pub, or Sub, Cloud Bigtable, Cloud Data Proc, Cloud Data Flow, Cloud Storage. 2. Loading data, for example, Command Line Upload, API Transfer, Import, or Export, Load Data from Cloud Storage, Streaming Data to Cloud Pub, or Sub. Number 5. Deploying, and Implementing Networking Resources. Tasks include. 1. Creating a VPC with subnets, for example, Custom Mode VPC, Shared VPC. 2. Launching a Compute Engine instance with custom network configuration, for example, Internal Only IP Address, Google Private Access, Static External, and Private IP Address, Network Tags. 3. Creating Ingress and egress firewall rules for a VPC, for example, IP subnets, tags, service accounts. 4. Creating a VPN between a Google VPC, and an external network using Cloud VPN. 5. Creating a load balancer to distribute application network traffic to an application, for example, Global HTTPs Load Balancer, Global SSL Proxy Load Balancer, Global TCP Proxy Load Balancer, Regional Network Load Balancer, Regional Internal Load Balancer. Number 6. Deploying a solution using Cloud Marketplace. Tasks include. 1. Browsing Cloud Marketplace Catalog, and viewing solution details. 2. Deploying a Cloud Marketplace solution. Number 7. Deploying Application Infrastructure using Cloud Deployment Manager. Tasks include. 1. Developing Deployment Manager Templates. 2. Launching a Deployment Manager Template. Fourth. Ensuring successful operation of a cloud solution. Number 1. Managing compute engine resources. Tasks include. 1. Managing a single VM instance, for example, start, stop, edit configuration, or delete an instance. 2. Add a SSH RDP to the instance. 3. Ching a GPU to a new instance, and installing CUDA libraries. 4. Viewing current running VM inventory, instance IDs, details. 5. Working with snapshots, for example, create a snapshot from a VM, view snapshots, delete a snapshot. 6. Working with images, for example, 
Create an image from a VM or a snapshot, view images, delete an image. 7. Working with instance groups, for example, set auto-scaling parameters, assign instance template, create an instance template, remove instance group. 8. Working with management interfaces, for example, Cloud Console, Cloud Shell, G Cloud SDK. Number 2. Managing Google Kubernetes Engine Resources. Tasks include 1. Viewing current running cluster inventory, nodes, pods, services. 2. Browsing the container image repository, and viewing container image details. 3. Working with node pools, for example, add, edit, or remove a node pool. 4. Working with pods, for example, add, edit, or remove pods. 5. Working with services, for example, add, edit, or remove a service. 6. Working with stateful applications, for example persistent volumes, stateful sets. 7. Working with management interfaces, for example, Cloud Console, Cloud Shell, Cloud SDK. Number 3. Managing App Engine, and Cloud Run Resources. Tasks include. 1. Adjusting application traffic splitting parameters. 2. Setting scaling parameters for auto-scaling instances. 3. Working with management interfaces, for example, Cloud Console, Cloud Shell, Cloud SDK. Number 4. Managing storage and database solutions. Tasks include. 1. Moving objects between cloud storage buckets. 2. Converting cloud storage buckets between storage classes. 3. Setting object lifecycle management policies for cloud storage buckets. 4. Executing queries to retrieve data from data instances, for example, Cloud SQL, BigQuery, Cloud Spanner, Cloud Data Store, Cloud Big Table. 5. Estimating costs of a BigQuery query. 6. Backing up and restoring data instances, for example, Cloud SQL, Cloud Data Store. 7. Reviewing job status in Cloud Data Proc, Cloud Dataflow, or BigQuery. 8. Working with management interfaces, for example, Cloud Console, Cloud Shell, Cloud SDK. Number 5. Managing networking resources. Tasks include. 1. Adding a subnet to an existing VPC. 2. Expanding a subnet to have more IP addresses. 3. Reserving static external or internal IP addresses. 4. Working with management interfaces, for example, Cloud Console, Cloud Shell, Cloud SDK. Number 6. Monitoring and logging. Tasks include. 1. Creating stack driver alerts based on resource metrics. 2. Creating stack driver custom metrics. 3. Configuring log syncs to export logs to external systems, for example, on premises or big query. 4. Viewing and filtering logs in stack driver. 5. Viewing specific log message details in stack driver. 6. Using cloud diagnostics to research an application issue, for example, viewing cloud trace data using Cloud Debug to view an application point in time. 7. Viewing Google Cloud Platform Status. 8. Working with management interfaces, for example, Cloud Console, Cloud Shell, Cloud SDK. 5. Configuring Access and Security. Number 1. Managing Identity and Access Management IAM. Tasks include. 1. Viewing IAM role assignments. 2. Assigning IAM roles to accounts or Google Groups. 3. Defining custom IAM roles. Number 2. Managing service accounts. Tasks include. 1. Managing service accounts with limited privileges. 2. Assigning a service account to VM instances. 3. Granting access to a service account in another project. Number 3. Viewing audit logs for project and managed services. Preparatory resources for Google Associate Cloud Engineer. There are numerous resources that you can choose for preparation. But you should be very careful while picking the resources, as these resources will determine how well will you pass the exam. So, let us look at handful of resources. First, online training. There are various sites that provides the online training for this exam. The online training is the best way to prepare for the exam while developing strong understanding of the concepts. The online classes also provide you with good reading material like notes or recommends books that might be beneficial for you. 
Google has itself recommended some trainings that might help you in scoring well, and that are prepared officially by Google itself via Coursera, and other sites. Second, Instructor-led trainings. Instructor-led trainings are also one of the best options to prepare for the exam. The instructors who are well versed with this, and have excelled in this field are on board for teaching in the best possible way. Again, you can find many reliable sites that provide online training, and also provide you additional resources that can help you a lot. Third, hands-on trainings. Practicing, and learning to apply the concepts in real life is very important. This exam tests your competency for a job so all your concepts should be crystal clear, and you should know their application too. Fourth, practice papers, and sample tests. Practicing will help you determine, where do you lack in performing best, and will also help you in getting more confident on the day of exam by eradicating your silly mistakes. You can try a free practice test now. Try to solve as much papers as you can. They will let you identify the loopholes in your practice, and will help you in reaching the next level of preparation. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.